1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 2. And in this episode of our season with Ty and Jesse's number 60, not iRacing Ford, we are going to be completing race 19 of 33, which is going to take place at Iowa Speedway. In the last episode, we raced at Indianapolis Motor Speedway and finished in 23rd because for the second time in the season, I believe, I choked in one of the corners, one of the final laps of the race, which sent me to last place because I had to repair damage. But I improved the car to the point where I was actually able to make a bunch of spots. Sadly, I still finished really badly. Now, Iowa. Last time we came to Iowa, I just remembered we won that race. But that was because of some ridiculous pit strategy. I don't know if that's going to happen again, but if it does, we're practically going to go back-to-back. -back, or not back-to-back. Two-for-two at Iowa. I don't know why I said back-to-back. -back. I just finished freaking 23rd. Our past couple of races have been shit. Let's just hope that the same thing happens to Iowa that happened last time and... I have a nice day, not a horrible weekend entirely. Here are the point standings for those who didn't check it out in the last race, though. Uh, Justin Algar is still in first place. Um, Justin Algar actually won the first two stages at Indianapolis, but he didn't wind up winning. I think he finished in 14th or something. And the person that won the last race was Daniel Suarez, got his second win of the season. Uh, William Byron second, Elliot Sadler in third. Uh, you can look at the rest of that stuff. We're still in ninth somehow, just one point in front of Harrison Rhodes. Hopefully... We do well enough, I would actually make up a position or just pull away from Harrison Rhodes or something like that. Don't know how it's going to turn out until we actually do it. Also, in the last episode, Casey Kane got his second DNF of the season. Quite similar to what happened at Daytona because he had engine problems halfway through the race. And you can look at the playoff standings right here. Um, yeah, there you can see Daniel Suarez is now in fifth place, moving William Byron into sixth because Daniel Suarez got his second win of the season. Okay, let's go ahead and get to Iowa Speedway. If I'm correct, this is going to be a day race. I got a lot of sleep last night, but yet somehow I'm still really tired right now. And I obviously just got off work and everything, but somehow I'm actually kind of tired right now. So, expect that to affect my ability to race this track. So, it's obviously morning. It looks like it's probably 8 o'clock in the morning right now at this track. So, that's interesting. And uh, I think the race is probably going to take place at sunset or something. Well, maybe not so much sunset. Maybe less sunset than New Hampshire was, but let's get into qualifying. Ah, uh, I really do like racing at this track at daytime because almost everything else takes place at night. I'm kind of tired of how many races take place um, during the nighttime in the truck series and in the Xfinity series as well. And like I said, whenever we went to Kentucky, I really was hoping that it would um, take place at some point in one of the series during the daytime. But as far as I'm concerned, every Kentucky race takes place at night. Okay, golly, this car is so freaking tight. That was my problem whenever we went to Indianapolis. The freaking car was so damn tight. Uh, yeah, we're going to make some adjustments before we actually start the actual race, but this is probably going to keep me from qualifying well. I'm giving it all I got. Come on, finish the corner. Just finish the corner. Why won't you finish the corner? Stupid Xfinity Series cars are so garbage. 38th. These cars suck so bad. Like... I cannot imagine how I could possibly improve my lap times to the point where I could actually make it into the top 30. But that's our worst qualifying in the past few races, because we had 27th at Indianapolis, which was amazing. And then before that, I don't remember where we started, but I swear it was in the top 30 even then. Uh, I didn't even look to see who started on the pole. My bad. You probably saw it. You can always look and go back. Um, custom race garage. We're going to change the wedge down. Actually, I think our wedge is the same thing it was last time. So that that's kind of sad. So we're going to drop it down to 47. Um, you know, let's make it 46.5. Really, really freaking loose because I don't like how tight this race car is despite the fact that it's um, the same wedge adjustments that I had last time. That's kind of ridiculous. Okay, save setup. Save um, uh, back. There's so many freaking buttons to press in the setup crap. Okay, so it's not exactly sunset. It's kind of afternoonish. 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But the green flag's out. We're underway for our second race here at Iowa. Starting on the outside, but the inside is now available to me. Whoever that was on the inside was not willing to just let me in there. He was trying so hard to stay underneath me, but he failed. And because we got the inside, we're already making passes. We got all this room to dive into turn one. Our first lap, our first lap, our first stage is going to be six laps. My car still won't turn going to the corner because I didn't dive in early enough. Uh, and now this guy's underneath me, but we're going to clear. I'm going to dive back to the inside. I need to not hit the apron at any point because that's always a problem whenever race at races in this game. I don't know where the 07 car is going, but I barely even touched him. Okay, we're into 29th. 
I just need to keep on moving. No time to waste. I'm tired of wasting time at these freaking races that we do. I went to Indianapolis and I felt like I was wasting time there even though I was actually trying. For the most part, I just couldn't move forward as fast as I need to. And then I screwed up stage two in the last race. But this one, uh, I'm going to give it all I got and maybe the um, stupid pit strategy thing will happen again. We'll just wind up winning. Of course, I remember almost losing the last race here to Ryan Reed. What the hell? I didn't even touch the apron game. Okay, I did a 360, and then someone crashes into me again and sends me to the outside wall, and they finally throw a caution. I don't know. I'm not taking the blame for that. I didn't make these stupid fucking aprons. So that ended just stage one early by, like, four laps. Who the hell is this? Oh, it's Joey Gates. Stupid ass. Um, well, I'm already in dead freaking last, so... Well, not exactly in dead last, but I want to be on the inside or be able to get to the inside easier. So we're going to repair damage, four tires, full tank of fuel, all that crap. Uh, we're going to have fresh tires at the restart. What's with this stupid track? This, this track. This stupid game. This freaking game and all these stupid NASCAR games. How come they can't just make a NASCAR game where the aprons aren't cancer anymore? Will it ever end? Well, I mean, I guess it ended for a little while in the Technics games. But I get to the inside, Smithley get out from in front of me. Okay. I mean, I didn't think I was on the apron. Apparently, I, I nipped at it just a bit, and the car decided to start doing donuts. I don't. I really don't get it. Stage two is going to be eight laps in length. I'm not sure if it's longer because of the shortened stage one or what. But now I'm on the outside. I can't get any grip going in the middle of the corners. I don't know if I'm diving in too hard, or this car is this car is just not capable of doing what I want it to do. Van Kennedy, stop overreacting. Get out the fucking way. I don't, I don't have time for games. I'm trying to race. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. I don't know. I can go faster in the corner, but I, I actually can't because there's a car in front of me that wants to drive slow. That's, that's not my kind of race. My car keeps going to the outside off the corners, and then I have to get back to the inside, and if there's someone that is on my inside as I come off the corner, then it's, I have to slow down just to get underneath them and everything. Uh, I'm trying so hard not to waste time, but my lack of patience is not getting me um, positions. It's just losing positions. Why is the apron above the yellow line? I swear to God it used to be underneath it, but now it's way above it. I just noticed that looking at it. That might have been why that happened earlier. Because the apron is above the yellow line too much. Oh my God, Harvey. You are nuts. Freaking nuts. Look at all these tire marks in the corners. I'm just now noticing that. Okay, so we're about to be halfway through stage two. And wow. Kevin Harvick's making three wide. He's on the move. I'm kind of afraid to go any lower than I just went a while ago because I'm seeing the apron above that line. But we're on our move as well. Just got to keep getting underneath people. Okay, don't push Harvick. Don't hit that apron. If you look towards the, the yellow line, um, about a foot above it is where the apron begins. It kind of reminds me of how it was back whenever they first released this game and it was with Kentucky. And it was like that with Iowa too, but maybe they fixed Iowa along with Kentucky and now Iowa's just back, or maybe I'm full of myself and the apron's really been like this all along, but oh my god, that apron is way too high. What's with them and not having the apron in the right place? Like, that's not that difficult. That's one of the easiest parts of the game, it's just the track design. Overall, 7-4 games is great at designing racetracks, but all of a sudden they bring this game out and it's like they keep putting things in wrong places. Ugh, Tyler Reddick is really slow off turn 4. I'm trying to get out from behind him, and we do. Got two laps to go in the stage right now. Let's see if I can get a top 15 here. Uh, whenever we take our pit stops, that's really not going to help our case that much, is it? Because whenever we do that, it's just going to send us all the way back to the last place. Or, not last place. I think we'll do a little bit better than that. It took me forever just to catch Jeremy Clement, so I don't know about top 15. Tower is really starting to come in now. We turn the car. In the car. I'm going to pit with everybody else, despite the fact I already pitted earlier. Uh-oh, someone's having engine troubles, I think. Or they just had a horrible turn, too. I don't know. This 48 car here, that's Brennan Poole. Okay, we got 15th. Trying to finish the pass on Darrell Wallace Jr. Not checking up for him. And we've got 15th. Uh, yeah, the top 10 across the start finish line, so that's the end of Stage 2. Stage 1 was a catastrophe, all because I barely touched the apron. But you know this game. Okay, who won stage one? I haven't been keeping track of this. Uh, I know, oh, Eric Jones won the first one. I saw that. Ty Dillon just won this one. And now everybody's taking pit stops. We're going to do the same. Uh, no damage needs to be repaired. Four tires, full tank of fuel, even though I probably don't need two cans of fuel. I'm just going to make sure I'm certified that I can make it to the end of this race. 
I lost 25 positions. What happened to maximum of 20 positions? They're just making sure that I can sit the last place, and this game is just, this whole freaking race is hard as fuck. Come on, game. How can my Piku suck this bad? Maybe I should have used pit strategy. I honestly didn't expect to lose any more than 20 positions. And for some reason, everybody's going extremely slow for turn one. I'm not being very forgiving in that sense, because you artificial intelligence should be a little intelligent. It's in the name. Oh, okay. I wanted to clear... Um, uh, who Armstrong? Billy Joe Armstrong. Lead senior Green Day over here. I don't know. But for some reason, he dove underneath me, and I couldn't get the car to turn. I, I tried. I can only try. Uh, McCleod over here is pulling up in front of me, and now he's pushing me up the track with his ass. I don't know how that works in terms of physics. Okay, get underneath him. I can already tell that this Iowa race is going to be a completely different one than the first one was because we're not getting some bogus pit strategy thing. Maybe it's because it's that day or it's a different length. I don't know. Was the first um, Iowa Speed Race 40 laps as well, or was it a different length that I don't remember? Okay, so we're into 31st place. This car is still too tight. It's on 46.5 wedge, and it is still too tight. I could have sworn 46.5 would be a little more effective than this, but it's not sliding around like it did at Phoenix back in the day. Get off the apron that it did, should not be there, car. Oh my god. I'm so salty. I'm so triggered. This game is bleach. Get off the apron. And drive up into the 07 car because you can't get off the apron without driving into the 07 car. That's how this game works. If you want to get off that apron, you got to hit that 07 car, JC. We're diving underneath JJ Yilly here. Or not. So we're going to drive in his back bumper because my car didn't want to start turning. I'm still sliding around because of the apron. Uh, JJ Yilly just completely overreacting to a little contact, just like all the AI do in this game. Okay, underneath David Starr, trying not to hit the apron. I, I just... I'm so limited to what I can do going into a corner because of that damn apron. I'm trying so hard not to hit the apron, but I keep hitting it off. And you can see the car getting a little tail happy every time I come off the corner a little bit if I slightly touch it. Into 28th place. This time by, we got 10 laps to go. I think I might be able to get a top 10 out of this. Maybe, maybe not, because tower can always change how things are going for me. The field's not spreading out that much, so that's another benefit I have right now. They're not going very high up against the wall, so that's keeping me from diving as hard as I want to into the corners. Ah, and thus I'm having to slow down so much just so I can get the car to start turning. So there's Joey Gase, the guy that parked his car in front of me under the first caution for no reason. Okay, I'm making it three wide. There's the apron. I see these AI hit the apron, and then they flip out and try to get off it over again. They look like me whenever I touch the apron. What is happening? Everybody's going so slow all of a sudden. Darrell Wallace Jr. or Jeremy Clements? I don't know. These two guys are going slow and slowing the whole field down. I don't know if they're dealing with the apron just like I do, but whenever I hit the apron, that's what I do. I get off of it and get tight, get this freaking brakes and crap, and I don't know if that's what they're doing or what. It's weird, man. It's new to me. There's a huge gap between Jeremy Clements and the rest of the field, so I don't know about getting this top ten. Unless there's some kind of caution, which would be my luck then I think the best we can probably get is like a top 15. That's probably how long it's going to take me to catch the rest of the field. Towers keep me from making a simple pass right here on Jeremy Clements. I'm trying to, but I can only do so much of this race car. He hit the brakes mid-corner, and I'm just going to run him up the racetrack like a dickhead, because that's what I am. Ah, uh, come on. We can make a few more spots out of this. Oh my god, the car's so tight. Despite my wedge adjustments, like I've said a million times. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, these wedge adjustments make my car better than theirs, or at least more drivable for me. But at the same time, the fact that it's still so tight with these wedge adjustments goes to show that these race cars are just too tight in the series. I'm really starting to notice that in the past couple of races, aren't I? Okay, so we're catching them. It's taken forever. Oh my god. Oh my god! <sighs> Starting to hate this game! That's not good, man. I shouldn't start hating the game whenever I'm only halfway done playing through it on my fucking channel. Casey Kane is trying to come back from this multiple DNFs that he's had this season after the last race. Hitting that apron because I'm trying so hard to get this car turned and make up this time so I can get a few more positions. I don't know how Casey Kane's on my ass right now, man. I messed up last lap, but he's still right there. Uh, I don't know if they're conserving tire or what, but in these games... It's never been known for AI or even the driver himself playing the game to conserve tire whatsoever. I don't even think a top 15 is possible anymore because it's taking me forever to catch these guys and I keep making mistakes because of how bad this car is with the tire wear. 
Casey Kane is still right there, so if I get a little tight, he's going to go underneath me. Come on, come on. Diving in. Up. Oh, somebody got loose again. They're going to slow down in front of Eric Almarola. Eric Almarola is going to get up behind the situation, but this guy is going to slow down Keselowski. Turn the car, turn the car. I can't turn the car. You need freaking Casey Kane dive on the corner because this car is perfect. Um, somebody just went down the road. Is that Brendan Poole? Okay, two laps to go. This is my chance to get up to 16th place. We gain position because whoever that was just went down pit road. My car sucks so bad with the tire wear. Everybody's just diving underneath me because I can't get mine to dive like that anymore. Frustration. Frustration. Uh, this guy is diving in. I'm trying to still make a pass on Casey Kane. I'm going to push Casey Kane up the track because uh, double dickhead this race. Um, I have no idea what I just said. Okay, we're going to get 16th. Alma Roll pulled up in front of me. He's trying to block. Well, if you block, I'm going to run you over. That's how life works. Um, at least whenever you're on my channel, you block me, I run you over. Mm -hmm. My spot, my spot, my spot, my spot. Fuck you. Mines. Mines, 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 mines. Mining mines. Mine her mining mines, mines. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, we got 16. Like I said, I didn't think we'd get 15, even though somebody went down pit road. And I was thinking that was Brennan Poole, but I think that's Brennan Poole. Yeah, that's Brennan Poole in the 48 car, so I don't know who it was. Maybe they were having engine trouble towards the very end, and that was them ending off the race a little early. Uh, I got a new speed rating of 105, so that had to have something to do with my uh, car adjustments, making this track more drivable. But it still felt like it was too tight. Elliot Sadler finished one lap down. He was the driver that was going down pit road. I knew it was a blue car. That's all I could tell. And then I realized it wasn't Brendan Poole because he finished right in front of me. I looked in the replay and I saw one main financial a little bit, so I get I was kind of realizing it was him. But wow, Elliot Sadler, a driver who hasn't DNF since probably the first race of the season whenever he ruined the entire Daytona race in the final stage, I remember that. But yeah, he was doing really well in the season and now you got a DNF. So many DNFs in this season. But Ty Dillon came away with the win and he won the second stage. Eric Jones won the first stage, he finished in second. So they stayed up front practically all race long. As you saw, there was us in 16th place. And you can look through the rest of the race results. William Byron, third. Harrison Rhodes, fourth. Justin Allgaier, fifth. Ryan Reed, sixth. And um, here are the point standings. This is our best finish in probably the past couple of races. I mean, we finished 19th in New Hampshire. And then we finished in 23rd at... Um, where did we race yesterday? I don't remember where we raced yesterday. That's sad. But whatever. We got 23rd over there. And um, this, this is just our best finish in a couple races. But somehow we're falling through the points. Why can't I do good anymore? I feel like I'd do better if I wasn't lose 25 spots under caution just because I took a pit stop like everybody else. Why can't my pit crew just not suck? I mean, is that too much to ask for? Yes, it is, because 704 games, it, they won't stop it. Elliot Tyler ran the fastest lap in this race with a 23.5 and got a DNF. Probably had the toughest break as well. Ty Dillon led the most laps with 25 laps. We started 38th and finished in 16th, so we were on the move. But we still didn't finish where I exactly wanted to. And, of course, like I guessed, Elliot Tyler, toughest break, started 7th and finished in 40th. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, um, I don't know about that. I, I don't want to. Watkins Glen is going to be race 20. We're going to go there first next weekend. And then right after that, we got another road course, Mid-Ohio. Race 21, another race that's not sponsored by anything or has a race logo or whatever. That, that's that's kind of getting old with this game. But, uh, um, uh, 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 okay. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> well, so here are the point standings now. Justin Allgaier is still at the top of the points table. William Byron is in second. Eric Jones is now in third because Elliot Sadler fell back after getting that DNF. He's in fourth. Ryan Reed, 5th. Blake Cook, 6th. Daniel Suarez, who won at Indianapolis, is in 7th. Ty Dillon, 8th. Harrison Rhodes, ninth, And there is us in 10th. I was trying to finish in front of Harrison Rhodes just to stay in ninth, or maybe make a few points on Ty Dillon or whoever, but I failed. I hate failing. And you can look through the rest of the point settings. blah 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 blur blah, blah, blah. Let me guess. We're going to make up a few spots in the next couple races because of road courses. The only problem is road courses are road courses. You know, anything can happen at a road course. You know, I could overdrive a corner and then end my entire day. Or um, the AI are going to suck because I guess the AI suck at road courses in these NASCAR games these days. I don't know. What's it going to be? We're still in third place in the playoff standings. 
just behind Justin Allgaier and Elliot Tower because we're the three guys, three wins, just like always. And uh, you can look through the rest of this. Ty Dillon actually jot, 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 just got his first win of the season, for those who didn't know that. I'm just not finding that out right here. I'll see you guys next weekend at Watkins Glen for the Zippo 200. Uh, oh no. See you next time. That's that and episode over.